for Cheryl Sandberg. Please raise your hands. Excellent, I'm glad to hear it. Cheryl Sandberg is the COO of Facebook, and in 2011, she was the fifth most powerful woman in the world, according to Forbes magazine. When her colleagues came to congratulate her, tell her how exciting this was, she said, oh, don't talk about this. It's not that uh, important. And her assistant told her, you're handling this really badly. As women, we are supposed to be seen as likable, not powerful in the workplace. So this inspired a new wave of feminism. I said I was going to give a presentation with the F word, feminism. <laughs> and feminism is defined as the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality of men. This is me in third grade. I've always been a feminist of sorts. I loved Elizabeth Blackwell and Susan B. Anthony, all those great biographies of women that inspired me to want to work hard and make progress for women. Now there's a new book in 2013, Lean In, Women, Work, and the Will to Lead by Sheryl Sandberg. And this has sparked an entire movement. Of the 197 heads of state in the world, only 22 are women. Of the top 500 companies, 21 have female CEOs, and only 18% of Congress is women today. So this movement is comprised of three parts, community, education, and circles. First, I'll talk about education. Knowing some of these facts in the background really helps us have this conversation. I was born in 1975, the same year the Supreme Court rules that's unconstitutional for public employers to require women to take pregnancy leave. Not maternity leave, pregnancy leave, and that was unpaid. Now we think things have gotten a little bit better out there, but the truth is, the U.S. is one of four countries in the world without guaranteed paid maternity leave. Mothers are 44% less likely to be hired than equally qualified men. So we have some work to do, and there is legislation out there about paid maternity leave that would help women. This is my grandmother. My grandmother had a master's degree in education. My mother has a master's degree in education. I have a master's degree in education, all from Indiana University. <laughs> and she chose a job teaching that, even with a higher education, was considered a pink collar job. Have you heard that phrase before, the pink collar? Jobs that are traditionally occupied by women. My mother had a choice between nursing and teaching with her master's degree. So she chose teaching. Um, they're often jobs that women could work in and out of as they were raising their families. So they were flexible jobs. And this is part of the problem. Women lean out before they lean in. This is me in high school. I was an outspoken young woman then. And in fact, I was busy complaining that the future problem solvers that were selected by teachers were all boys. Odyssey of the Mind team was all boys in my Indiana high school. So I knew early on that I was bossy. <laughs> We're working to ban the word bossy as part of the Lean In movement. This is part of the education campaign. The idea is that men are often described as being leaders, assertive, having those executive skills, while women with command are described as bossy. Have you ever heard a boy or a man described as bossy? <laughs> Probably not. So the Ban Bossy campaign actually has tips for teachers, for managers, for parents, to help empower girls and women in the workplace and in schools. They partnered with the Girl Scouts and some other celebrities. This is my friend Linda Brand, who's standing in the back of the room here. She founded our local Lean In Circle. And the Lean In Circle started out as a small meeting in her South Minneapolis home and has now grown to circles around the Twin Cities totaling over 120 members now. We started a meeting back in um, spring of 2013, and we've met and talked about a variety of different topics, including negotiation, talking about um, body language, skills and values, and tolerations and boundaries. The community aspect of the Lean In movement includes this, what would you do if you weren't afraid Tumblr? People, uh, women and men, mostly women, are holding up signs 
or writing down what it is they would do if they weren't afraid and sharing them with a larger community. So I would ask for a raise, or I would start my own company. What would you do if you weren't afraid? I would give this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I had a daughter myself in December of 2012, so I've recently gone through the process of being pregnant, maternity leave, and the return to work process in the workplace. And I'm standing here today offering, I have a lot of suggestions for how we can welcome mothers back into the workplace. Okay, this is Nora, she's, four, oh, she's 16 months now. And um, I wanna make sure that I'm ensuring a workplace for her as she grows up where she feels that she can push boundaries, challenge the status quo, and move forward. I did get to meet Cheryl Sandberg. She actually came to Linda's South Minneapolis home and sat in our circle and talked to us face to face, person to person. She has gotten a lot of criticism about this movement and I find that exciting and energizing <laughs> because if people are talking, that means there's something to discuss. So let's continue this discussion as part of diversity and inclusion with these strong female role models at Hennepin County, as well as those in the university community. We want to continue to attract and retain bright and ambitious women. Thank you.